This is a map of Saudi Arabia. Known for its rich history, oil reserves, and as the birthplace of Islam, is now in the spotlight for a different reason. Joe Rogan has brought attention to a new discovery in the country, made by atheists that could link Saudi Arabia to Christianity. This unexpected connection is raising questions and controversy. This is so weird. Oh that. my God, they're so strange. What exactly have they found? How does it tie Saudi Arabia to Christianity? And why is this discovery causing such a stir among believers and historians? Let's find out. Saudi Arabia houses Mecca and Medina, the two holiest cities in Islam, drawing millions of pilgrims every year. As we explore Saudi Arabia's rich heritage alongside its modern landscape, this blend of ancient and contemporary Saudi Arabia provides a unique perspective on a country often recognized primarily for its natural resources. Mount Sinai, valued in the holy texts of the three Abrahamic religions, has always been shrouded in mystery. The debate over its true location has been ongoing, with some believing it's in Egypt, while recent research suggests it might actually be in Saudi Arabia. But before we can go further into the details of its location, we must focus on why Mount Sinai is so important to Jews, Christians and Muslims. For Jews, it's where God made a covenant with the Israelites. Christians see it as a symbol of God's presence and the place where Jesus taught his followers. For Muslims, it's where God communicated his will through Moses. This mountain, integral to these three faiths, now ties back to Saudi Arabia, a country historically linked to Islam. What does this mean for our understanding of religious history? How does this change the way we view Saudi Arabia and its place in the world's religious affairs? Has been a symbol of divine revelation and a cornerstone of faith for these three religions for centuries. But where exactly is Mount Sinai? As we explore this mystery, we highlight some range from ancient artworks to modern interpretations, each trying to capture the essence of this sacred site where, according to religious texts, God revealed himself to Moses and gave him the Ten Commandments. However, recent research and findings are challenging this long-held belief. Some scholars are now looking towards Saudi Arabia, specifically an area once known as Midian, as the potential location of Mount Sinai. This new theory suggests that Mount Sinai could be Jebel al a mountain in Saudi Arabia that some believe matches the biblical descriptions more closely. As we go deeper into the historical and archaeological evidence that supports this theory, we talk more about the intriguing clues found in the area, like ancient rock carvings and evidence of water flow that aligns with biblical narratives. These discoveries have sparked a new interest in the Arabian Peninsula as a significant biblical site, reshaping our understanding of religious history. How does the potential rediscovery of Mount Sinai in Saudi Arabia change our perception of religious history? What does this mean for the followers of Judaism, Christianity and Islam? First up, let's try to visualize this together. Mount Sinai, traditionally thought to be in Egypt, is where, according to the Bible, God handed down the Ten Commandments to Moses. It's a site that holds deep spiritual importance. But now, there's a buzz that this sacred mountain might actually be in Saudi Arabia. This idea is not just a wild guess, it's backed by some intriguing archaeological evidence. One of the key sites in focus is Jebel al Lawz. Some believe this could be the real Mount Sinai. Why? Well, it's got some compelling features, like a split stone that aligns with the biblical story of Moses. We believe this distinct landmark could be the rock that God commanded Moses to strike, from which water then gushed forth, from miraculously providing for the Israelite population, said Ryan Morrow. But this theory isn't just about physical evidence. There's a historical angle too. Did you know that in the time of the Apostle Paul, what he referred to as Arabia included the Sinai Peninsula and parts of what is now Saudi Arabia. That's a game changer in understanding where Mount Sinai could be. Imagine seeing carvings that date back thousands of years or standing at the base of a mountain that might have been witness to one of the most important moments in religious history. For ages, the traditional belief has been that Mount Sinai, 
a mountain of monumental importance to Jews, Christians and Muslims, is nestled somewhere in Egypt. Why is that? Well, that's the story that's been passed down through generations. Traditionally, the Sinai Peninsula, part of modern-day Egypt, has been recognised as the mountain's likely site. This belief has deep roots, woven into the fabric of religious history and pilgrimage. The inception of this traditional belief can be traced back to the influential decisions made by Queen Helena, the mother of Roman Emperor Constantine. In her quest to identify and commemorate key locations from the Christian narrative, Helena declared a spot in the Egyptian peninsula as Mount Sinai. Intriguingly, this declaration came without her ever visiting the site. Despite the absence of concrete evidence, her influence was profound, and this location was soon entrenched in Christian law as the authentic Mount Sinai. Over the ensuing centuries, the Sinai Peninsula evolved into a significant pilgrimage destination. One of its most notable landmarks is St. Catherine's Monastery, established in the 6th century. The monastery, believed to be built near the site of Moses' burning bush encounter, became a symbol of the sacredness of the area. Its location at the foot of what is traditionally called Mount Sinai, Jabal Musa, solidified the peninsula's religious significance. Historical visits and accounts further reinforced this belief. Pilgrims and religious scholars from various eras documented their journeys to the peninsula adding to its legacy as a holy site. These accounts, full of personal stories and spiritual thoughts, clearly showed the region's religious significance. Therefore, the traditional location in the Sinai Peninsula is not just a geographical identification. It represents a centuries-old tradition intertwined with the journey of faith for countless believers. As a convergence point of religion, history and culture, this site has been a beacon of spiritual significance, drawing pilgrims from across the Abrahamic faiths to partake in its storied history. This quest is not just about unearthing historical truths, it's about connecting the dots of faith, history and archaeology. Local archaeologists who have spent years studying the area share insights about recent discoveries, carvings of cows and bulls, signs of ancient encampments, and even a mysterious split rock. These findings resonate with the biblical descriptions of Mount Sinai and the events that took place there, as narrated in Exodus. One of the main reasons certain scholars claim that the Exodus is a myth is because little to no evidence for what the Bible records has been found at the traditional Mount Sinai in Egypt's Sinai Peninsula said Ryan Morov, a Middle Eastern expert on the subject. We also hear from the people living in these areas. Their oral histories and legends passed down through generations add another layer to this fascinating puzzle. For them, these mountains are not just historical sites, but part of their identity and heritage. Global Reactions delves into the diverse and vibrant spectrum of responses from various religious communities and scholars regarding the potential discovery of Mount Sinai in Saudi Arabia. This segment is not just about the geographical relocation of a sacred site, it's a window into how such revelations can reshape our understanding of faith and history. This revelation challenges long-standing beliefs in Judaism, Christianity and Islam, each of which holds Mount Sinai as a sacred site. The potential relocation of Mount Sinai to Saudi Arabia calls into question centuries of religious teachings and interpretations. It's not just about changing a spot on the map, it's about re-evaluating key historical and spiritual events like the Exodus and Moses receiving the Ten Commandments. This discovery could reshape how these religions view their history and scripture, influencing everything from academic study to religious practices and pilgrimages. Visually, this discovery could transform the artistic and cultural depictions associated with Mount Sinai. Maps may be redrawn and artistic portrayals might now depict a Saudi Arabian landscape rather than an Egyptian one. These changes are symbolic of a deeper shift in the understanding of religious stories. They represent a new era where historical and archaeological findings increasingly influence and reshape religious narratives. These theories have been put forward by multiple historians and researchers, not just today, but from centuries ago. One of the earliest prop sowers of this theory was Charles Becker, an English traveller, geographer and biblical critic. In 1873, Becker put forth a bold hypothesis, suggesting that Mount Sinai was a volcano. He published a pamphlet titled Mount Sinai, a Volcano, 
where he argued that the descriptions of Mount Sinai in the Bible indicated volcanic characteristics. Becker based his theory on the route Moses took upon his return to Egypt from Midian, located in northwest Arabia. He believed that Mount Sinai should be along this path, fitting the biblical narrative. Becker's journey led him to Saudi Arabia in 1874, where he explored his hypothesized location for Mount Sinai. However, he found that the mountain he investigated did not have volcanic properties, leading him to retract his volcanic theory. Despite this, Becker continued to advocate for the location in Saudi Arabia, basing his stance on the geographical position and historical associations of the area. He identified Jabal al-Nur, a mountain near Mecca, sacred to Muslims, as the place where Muhammad received his first revelation as a potential site for Mount Sinai. However, Becker's suggestion did not gain wide acceptance among scholars and explorers who continued to suggest various locations for Mount Sinai in Egypt, Jordan and Israel. His theory, focusing on a volcanic Mount Sinai, was also challenged by those who interpreted the biblical texts metaphorically or symbolically. Becker's ideas, although intriguing, remained controversial and were not widely adopted in academic circles. The 20th century brought renewed interest and unique theories regarding Mount Sinai's location, with explorers like Alois Musil and H. Philby making significant contributions. These scholars suggested alternative locations for Mount Sinai within Saudi Arabia, marking a shift from traditional beliefs that placed the mountain in Egypt. Alois Musil argued for a location in Saudi Arabia based on his geographical studies and historical associations. In 1910 v, he visited Jabal al-Manifa, a mountain near Wadi al-Harab, approximately 20 kilometers north of Juna. Musil posited that this mountain, situated on the eastern side of the Gulf of Aqaba in the territory of Midian, was the real Mount Sinai. This theory was grounded in the biblical account of Moses living in Midian before returning to Egypt. Musil's identification of Jabal al-Manifa as Mount Sinai was influenced by the mountain's geographical position, historical relevance, and local traditions that resonated with the biblical descriptions. H. Philby, another influential British explorer, diplomat, and author, extensively traveled through Arabia and contributed to this theory. He became a close friend of Ibn Saud, the founder of Saudi Arabia, and wrote several books on his journeys, including The Heart of Arabia and Arabian Highlands. In these works, he described his visit to Jabal al-Manifa in 1952, where he confirmed Musul's identification of the mountain as Mount Sinai. Philby noted the presence of a mosque on its summit and the reverence it held among local Bedouins, further asserting its significance. He compared Jabal al-Manifa with other proposed locations for Mount Sinai in Egypt and Jordan, concluding that the mountain in Saudi Arabia was the most convincing candidate. Apart from Philby and Musil, other explorers in the 20th century proposed a new theory about Mount Sinai's location. This was stated by the French scholar Jean Koenig. Koenig's theory revolved around the idea that Mount Sinai was a volcanic peak situated in Saudi Arabia. This novel concept was introduced in 1971 when Koenig published an article titled Sinaitic Itineraries in Arabian which presented a detailed argument supporting his hypothesis. Koenig's theory was based on several key criteria. Firstly, he considered the distance and direction from Egypt, proposing that the biblical descriptions of Mount Sinai alignied with the characteristics of a volcanic peak known as Hala al-Bada, also referred to as Jabal al-Lawz. This mountain, located near al-Bad, about 100 kilometers east of the Gulf of Aqaba, showed geological and topographical features that Koenig believed matched the biblical narrative of Mount Sinai. Koenig also emphasized the presence of water sources and vegetation around this mountain, which he argued were essential for the sustenance of the Israelites as described in the Bible. Additionally, he considered the suitability of the area for camping and grazing, which would have been necessary for the large number of people and their flocks during the Exodus. In his comparisons, Koenig evaluated other potential locations for Mount Sinai in Egypt, Jordan, and Israel, but found them lacking in certain aspects. He asserted that Jabal al-Lawz was the only mountain that met all the requirements laid out in the biblical account. Koenig's proposal of a volcanic Mount Sinai in Saudi Arabia 
was influenced by previous explorers and scholars, but was unique in its detailed arguments and evidence. His hypothesis, while intriguing and backed by considerable research, added a new dimension to the ongoing debate about the true location of Mount Sinai, challenging traditional beliefs and sparking further scholarly discussion. However, recently, Ron Wyatt, an American self-proclaimed archaeologist, stirred controversy with his claim of discovering Mount Sinai in Saudi Arabia. Wyatt's claim centered around Jabal al lawz a mountain near Al-Bad, located approximately 100 kilometers east of the Gulf of Aqaba. He based his conclusion on various observations and interpretations of the biblical narrative. Wyatt argued that the distance and direction from Egypt to Jabal al lawz were consistent with the biblical account of the Israelites' journey. He supported his theory with ancient sources like Josephus and Eusebius, asserting that the Israelites crossed the Red Sea at the Gulf of Aqaba. Wyatt estimated that Jabal al-Lawz was within an 11-day journey from Kadesh Barnea, where the Israelites camped before and after their stay at Mount Sinai. Wyatt also cited evidence of water sources and vegetation near Jabal al-Lawz. He claimed to have found a large split rock, which he speculated was the rock Moses struck to provide water for the Israelites. Additionally, he reported finding almond trees near the mountain, drawing parallels to Aaron's rod that budded. Furthermore, Wyatt pointed to the suitability of the area for camping and grazing, suggesting he found a large plain at the foot of Jabal al lawz that could accommodate a massive number of people and their flocks. He also claimed to have discovered stone enclosures and pillars that could be remnants of the Israelite camp and altars. Wyatt referenced the geological and topographical features of the mountain, claiming evidence of fire and smoke at the summit, which he associated with the divine manifestations described in the Bible. He also mentioned finding a cave that could be where Moses met with God. However, Wyatt's claims were met with significant skepticism and criticism. Critics highlighted his lack of formal training in archaeology and the unscientific nature of his methods. Licensed excavations or peer-reviewed publications did not back his work. Wyatt faced opposition from both secular and religious authorities and was arrested several times by the Saudi Arabian government for trespassing and smuggling artifacts. His work caused confusion and division among his followers and supporters, leading to disputes over the ownership and validity of his discoveries after his death. Despite these controversies, Wyatt's claims about Mount Sinai in Saudi Arabia remain a topic of intrigue and debate. Apart from the Sinai mountain, Saudi Arabia has become a store of other archaeological discoveries, shedding new light on the ancient world. These finds not only offer insight into the region's past, but also have significant implications for understanding broader historical and cultural narratives. The Alulav region, with its stunning desert landscape, is home to the ancient city of Hegra, also known as Madain Saleh. A UNESCO World Heritage Site, Hegra is famous for its well-preserved Nabataean tombs with elaborate facades cut into sandstone cliffs. These tombs, dating back to the first century AD, provide evidence of the sophisticated civilizations that once thrived in the Arabian Peninsula. Venturing further into Saudi Arabia's rich historical background, we find ourselves in the Hale region. Here, the Jabba rock art site stands as one of the most significant petroglyph sites in Saudi Arabia. In 1879, Lady Anne Blunt and her husband Wilfred explored the Nafud Desert in northern Saudi Arabia, heading towards Hail. During their journey, they stopped at Jabba, an oasis known for its ancient rock art. Lady Anne, interested in acquiring Arabian horses, and Wilfred, seeking ancient inscriptions, were among the first Westerners to see these artworks. Lady Anne described it as one of the most curious places in the world, and to my mind, one of the most beautiful. The carvings, some dating back to the Neolithic period, depict a diverse range of subjects, from human figures to animals like camels and horses, indicating the region's historical importance as a hub of ancient human migration and settlement. Shifting focus to the eastern province, this archaeological site is renowned for being where a significant gold mine of the ancient world was located. Excavations have unearthed a variety of artifacts, including gold jewellery and pottery, 
offering insights into the economic activities and trade networks of ancient Arabian societies. In contrast to the mainland's historical riches, the Farasan Islands, off the southwestern coast of Saudi Arabia, tell a different story. Known for their rich biodiversity and archaeological significance, these islands have revealed numerous ancient settlements and artifacts, indicating a long history of human habitation and maritime activity. But that's not all. Situated in the Persian Gulf, Tarout Island has a history that dates back to the Dilmun civilization, one of the oldest in the region. Excavations have uncovered ancient pottery, graves and remnants of fortifications, highlighting the island's role as a key trading and cultural center. These discoveries not only enrich our understanding of Saudi Arabia's history, but also contribute significantly to our knowledge of ancient civilizations in the Arabian Peninsula. They illustrate the region's historical significance as a crossroads of cultures, trade and human development. Thanks for exploring with us on Beyond Discovery. If you enjoyed these revelations, click now on the next video that pops up on your screen. It's unbelievable.